What's going on everyone? We are here in the BD studio. I am Nathan Winicky, and today we're going to be going over some nighttime bluefin technique. We're going to go over the setups, the baits, the line, but more importantly kind of how to use it all. So with that, let's jump into it. Uh, let's start with the setups here. So there's, I brought kind of a high end, a high end and a low end here. And I wanted to show you both because both have great applications for nighttime fishing. And if you're not willing to spend $1,500, which is, you know, not, which is completely understandable, um, there's options for you. So this is the setup I brought as kind of my lower end knife fishing nighttime setup. Um, this is the GraphTech. GraphTech rod. This one in particular is 7.8, rated 130 to 150. It's a broomstick and it's only about 260 bucks. So if you're looking for a budget rod, these rods, this company in particular has made strides in the past couple of years at improving the quality of their product and making something that is worthy of big fish, right? The reel I have back here is the older generation Fathom 40. These are now silver, but they're basically the same exact thing. Um, line wise, I've got 80 pound braid to 130 pound. No, I'm actually sorry. I have, I have 100 pound on the top of this. So 80 pound braid is important because it actually sinks a lot faster. It cuts through the water better than 100 pound does. And when you're fishing smaller jigs, that's gonna play a difference. Um, the big difference between this and the setup I'm about to talk about is that this is the setup that you want to be using when the fish are 50 to 80 pounds, sometimes even smaller. That happens where you get on night bites and it's that schoolie grade. And when you have it on your 16 and your rail rod, it's like catching mackerel, you know? You just grind these things right up to the boat. So if you want something to kind of have a little bit of fun with it, if you hook a bigger fish, you can still totally land it, right? The Fathom 40 with some sort of rod like this is an excellent option. So let's switch over now. Say that you're looking for your, like your cow setup. This is something you want to go out there. You're fishing big fish. This is kind of more the caliber you want to be with. This is the United Composites uh, RCX Viper. Uh, one of their stiffer rods. And what kind of separates this from the GraphTech is that this is going to have a really high quality double helix design. Um, you see, has been pushing the, the technology in terms of, of their blanks and what they put into it. So it's gonna be lighter overall, it's gonna have a faster action, and it's gonna have a lot more pulling power. So it is still a composite rod, but it's gonna be largely graphite with just a little bit of fiberglass in the tip. Um, the reel I have back here is the International 16 VISX. Um, all around, people love this reel. I love it, I've used it for a couple of seasons now, zero issues. I've got a 100 pound line with 130 pound on top. And the 100 pound with this, you put it, you get a little bit more on than you would with the 40. So I still have about 450 yards of line with room for a top shot. So let's talk about line for a second. I mentioned that I have 80 pound and 100 pound on this, but you might've noticed white, right? So I work in a tackle shop, Pacific Coast Bait and Tackle on Oceanside, check us out. Um, and what we're able to do, and basically any other tackle shop in the area, is we're able to mark your line every 100 feet with either a Sharpie or a bit of other braid that we wrap on there. Um, and that is essential, uh, especially when you're fishing the nighttime stuff. The captain's gonna be calling out numbers. Guys, I see fish at 180, I see fish at 230 feet or whatever. And you gotta know at least a little bit of where your jig is, okay? I mark my stuff every 100 feet down to about 400 feet. If you want it way easier though, get something like Beyond Braid. This is braid, 100 pound braid. It's eight strand carrier. It's gonna be feeling very similar to what you have otherwise, but it's marked color wise every 100 feet, it changes color. It's got four different colors. So you know that every time it changes, you're 100, another 100 feet down. Um, it just looks a little bit different, um, but there's a lot of different types of this. This changes every 100, but there's stuff that changes every 20. So it changes every 25. You know, so look into the colored line because it's really growing in popularity and it makes your nighttime fishing like a thousand times easier. So let's get into the nighttime fishing a little bit. Let's talk about technique wise before we even get into the lures. Um, I want to kind of talk about how we're going to be fishing and how you want to set yourself up for success. So in my experience, and I'm sure you guys have seen this too, um, when you're fishing nighttime and the captain sees a spot, he slows down the boat, says, everybody go, right? Most people resort to their instincts. They grab their rod, they head right to the stern, and they drop their jig off the back. It scopes way out. Sometimes they get bit, 
But what happens is that when your line is scoped out like that off your stern, you might be on your 300 foot mark, but your jig's only 80 feet down. So rather than dropping off of the stern with everybody else, what I like to do is I, I actually like to stay up kind of where, where the captain is by the wheelhouse. And when he stops, I'm throwing my jig up current and letting it sink straight down, walking back to the stern, and it's allowing my line to stay more up and down, and I'm actually getting into the zone where the fish are at much quicker than the guys um, throwing it off the back. So if I were to say anything, I would say start in the bow. The other thing that's really important is how that boat drifts. Every sport boat or every private boat drifts a little differently. Some drift stern first, some drift bow first. It's really a good idea at the beginning of the trip, go to the deckhand, be like, hey, you know, is there anywhere, in, any place on the boat that gets bit better? And you'd be surprised at how often they say, yes, you should be there. So little things, right? You gotta think about this through your mind. Basically, this is yo-yo fishing, but you wanna stay right up and down. So with that said, let's jump into some jigs. This kind of started as a joke last year and has turned into a very real thing. Um, there's a bunch of different names. I know this as the Eddy Bomb. All it is is a wire through 16 ounce sinker with a, with a treble hook on the bottom and a bite leader. This has been getting bit. There's been multiple 200 pound bluefin caught on a straight up sinker. So the other jig that I brought besides the Eddy Bomb is something a little bit lighter. This is the Williamson Kensaki. Obviously you've seen it's gotten all bit up, but it's a light one. It's only 220 grams. And this is the lure that I'll use on my lighter setup, but it's for when the fish are higher up in the column. When the fish are 150 to 200 feet down, this has a, have, this has a lot more fluttering on the way back down, and it allows you to work that upper column much more effectively. And so I did a couple of modifications to my lures just in this past year. I used to have them all blinged out. I would have like a pair of assist hooks on the bottom, usually another on top, and maybe even like another one off of that. And this year they've really tried a lot of the sport boat guys have recommended rigging it just like this nothing on the top nice solid set of hooks on the bottom what this does is that it makes your whole line so much more linear because these fish for the vast majority of the time are sucking these lures in so it's not like the extra assist hooks are really making a huge impact but what it does is that say it eats it right and you hook this fish in the corner of the mouth this jig is swinging all around. If you have another assist hook on the top, it's gonna to go around and hook it, probably in the, in the cheek somewhere. And I know you guys have seen that. If it's a big enough jig, they'll hook them in like the peck fin. And what that does though, is it changes where you're fighting that fish. So now instead of fighting that fish in the mouth, you're fighting that fish from the peck fin. And that's much harder for you. Also, when that fish is coming over the rail, it's getting hooked on the rail, or even worse, gets hooked into a deckhand. So what guys are recommending is that you just use the single pair of hooks and you really watch your line because you'll still get bites, you'll still hook fish, but it's a lot safer for the cruise. So the final thing here is just bite leaders on all your jigs. I mentioned on the Eddy Bomb, but it's really important, especially if you're going after that, you know, lifetime type fish, you know, 150 pound, 200 pounder, you don't want to get bit off. So what the bite leader is, is just a bit of line, not that long, maybe two feet, of extra heavy fluoro or mono, I like 200 pound, and you crimp it directly to your jig. It not only gives you more confidence to pull hard, but when that fish does inhale your jig, that is gonna hold out to those teeth, and you'll be able to land it. So, with all that said guys, thank you so much for sticking around. If you're going night fishing soon, keep this in mind. I hope it helped. Please like, subscribe, put a comment below if it did, or if you have anything else to recommend, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much.